Let's consider problem A. Sorting with twos. We have an array of integers from a1 to an. We have two types of operations. No, we have one type of operation, which consists of two things. First of all, we choose some non-negative number m, such that 2 to the m is at most 10. And you subtract 1 from all numbers with these indices. What does it mean? It means that you have an array, and there are several prefixes, which I will call allowed prefixes. So the allowed prefixes are of size 1, of size 2, of size 4, of size 8, etc. And what you can do is choose one allowed prefix and subtract one from all numbers here. The aim is to check whether you can sort the array in non-decreasing order, so that each element is at least the previous element. To solve this problem, you will need quite standard idea, which is the difference array. I think it's called difference array, but I'm not sure. So there, there is an idea of prefix sums. Yeah, when if you have a1, a, let me start with 0. a0, a2, a1, a2, a3, etc., a, n minus 1. You go to the new array, which consists of b0 equals 0, a b1 equals a0 b2 equals a0 plus a1, etc. And the last element is, sorry, b n minus 1, is the sum of all n elements. The formula for bk is sum of all i's from 0 to k minus 1, a i. So this construction is called prefix sums. There is an inverse operation, which is called difference array. You consider an array, so if you have a0, etc., a n minus 1, you consider the new array, which is b i equals a i plus 1 minus a i. So this is the new array. These two operations are inverse of each other. Sometimes it is a bit different. So sometimes you would like to add zero here, here, and after that make the separation. So it will be not like a1 minus a0, a2 minus ny, a2 minus a1, a3 minus a2, etc. But sometimes you will also like to add zero here, so you will have a0 here. Sometimes, but not always. In this problem, you will not, we will not like to do it. Let's just consider these numbers. Okay. What's nice about these numbers? If you have some operation with segments, it is nicely rewritten as the, the operation with the difference array. Yeah, for example, let's consider operation which adds 1 to a0, a1, a2, a3. You added 1 to these elements. Let's look what happened in the difference array. The difference array starts as a1 minus a0, then a2 minus a1, a3 minus a2, a4 minus a3, a5 minus a4, etc. So you added one here, definitely, but you also added one to this element. So this difference did not change. The same is for this difference and for this difference. But for this difference, it's not true, because you only added one to this number, but you did not add it to this number. Actually, sorry, we subtract one. We subtract one, not add, so... Let's change it to subtraction. Ten, 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 ten. 
ten, ten. So you subtract one from these numbers, from these numbers, from these numbers, from these numbers, and this number disappears for some reason. So actually nothing changed except this number. Except B3. B3 was increased by 1. So in terms of difference array, you have the following operation. Choose some M and add 1 to B2 to the M minus 1. This is our operations. Each time you do it, actually it is a good idea to check the corner cases. So what happens to the leftmost elements and to the rightmost elements. And if you check, you find out that everything's fine. Yeah, for example, what happens if you subtract one from the whole array? Yeah, it doesn't change your difference array at all. But why? Yeah, because you you had to increment some element. Yeah, actually, this can only happen if n is 2 to the m. Because in this case, the length of b is 2 to the m minus 1. So you cannot add 1 to this element because it doesn't exist. You can either just pretend that it exists, for example, add 0 here or add plus infinity here. Plus infinity is even better because formally, if you want an array to be increasing or non decreasing, you can easily add plus infinity to the right part, to the right uh, end, because it doesn't change the condition of array being non decreasing. But either way, you can either ignore, ignore such operations or you can just uh, create a dummy element plus infinity and uh, add one to it. On the left part, everything's fine. So we have considered all corner cases. Now let's think what we need. We need it to be non decreasing. So this should occur. So this should be true. This should hold. This is same as to say that b i is at least zero. So you need the array b to be non-negative. Now we have the following problem. We have an array of size n minus one, which is called b, and we can add one to elements with indices two to the m minus one. So to zeroth element, first, third, seventh. 15th, etc. And we need to make this array non negative. Notice that if element is not of this form, for example, 10th element, you cannot change it. So if it is negative, then B cannot be ne uh, non negative. So if there is element, uh, an element which is negative and it is not with this index, you reply that the answer is no. But what if all such elements are non-negative? This means actually that we can make the initial array non-decreasing because we can make array B non-negative. This is because if element, for example, first is negative, we can just increment it by one as many times as we need to make it non-negative. And if element is already non-negative, we just don't touch it. So we do it and in the end we will get this. So the problem reduced to the following. Firstly you calculate the difference array. You iterate over all elements except the elements of this kind and you check that they are all non-negative. How to check that element is of this kind? There are some cool bit tricks. It is even possible to make a separate video of them. But briefly, you can take your number k and take number k plus 1. And you take their bitwise end. And if after that 
this is zero, this is equivalent to k being a power of two minus one. This happens because if you look at the binary representation, if you have all ones, and if you, if you add one more one, then all these ones are destroyed, they are replaced with zeros, and you get some other new one. But here will be zero here. And if, if not, so if there is at least, if it is not power two minus one, then there will be one which is preserved. So after adding one, it is still there. This is why this criterion works and you can use it to check the numbers on b in power of two minus one or also there is a criterion similar similar criterion which looks like this minus one and this checks that either k equals zero or k is power of two it will be useful for example in fenwick tree okay that's it for problem a